I'm Abad. Today I'd like to talk about some common issues pertaining our children, while also deriving some wisdom from one particular story about a Muslim youth, inshallah. So recently a Muslim mother reached out to me about her son, Abdullah, who's 12 years old. And like many kids today, Abdullah spends a great deal of his time on his tablet, on his iPad, playing video games, watching YouTube videos. And Abdullah's mother told me about something that recently happened with her son that involved a competition for $25,000 by a YouTuber, a YouTuber named Mr. Beast. Now previously I had no idea who Mr. Beast was, I'd never heard of him, but upon further research I realized that this just showed how out of touch I am with much of the youth, because Mr. Beast has 45.2 million subscribers on YouTube. SubhanAllah. YouTube is filled with channels that have tens of millions of subscribers that are 100% aimed at children. They make millions of dollars. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this topic today is to hopefully make some of us privy to what the youth are consuming. YouTube, video games, apps like TikTok. These are things that not only children are spending all day on, but yes, Muslim children as well. I taught for over a year at the Islamic school in Jacksonville, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And as I got to know them, I realized that this is the life of a kid nowadays for so many of them. They're living on technology and internet. They're not growing up like many of us who are a bit older grew up anymore. We grew up before internet and smartphones. We might remember a time when kids would just go outside and run around all day unsupervised. However, now we live in a time where some people literally call the police if they see a child walking by themselves to or from school. They're thinking, why is this child outside by themselves? This really happens. Now add the pandemic to that, and now we're all in our houses. We're all afraid and cautious to go out and do anything. We're hesitant for our children to even play together with other kids. And as parents, there's only so much we can handle ourselves to show them time and attention. So now our children and even us, we're all spending so much more time on these devices. So it's important that we are in tune with what's happening so we can, as Muslims, as a community, try to do what's best Islamically regarding these new issues we face today. But to get back to the story of Abdullah and this $25,000 contest, to give you an idea about this YouTuber, Mr. Beast, he's 22 years old. And to give you an idea about some of his most popular videos, they include titles like, I put 100 million Orbeez in my friend's backyard. Orbeez are little uh, squishy balls that grow in water. So this video, 101 million views. He put 100 million Orbeez in his friend's backyard in a swimming pool. This is what kids are watching. Another video, I bought everything in a store. 75 million views. Going through the same drive through 1,000 times, 75 million views. So these are the type of people, these are the types of videos children are watching. And like I said, Muslim children included. In fact, Abdullah comes from a very religious family. His parents are very practicing. They even made hijrah from America to a Muslim country so that they could live in a more Islamic environment. However, nowadays with the internet, we, we see they might be living in a Muslim country, but in their homes are non-Muslims hanging out with their children, entertaining them, influencing them through these devices. And it's not just the children, but it's all of us. We're all being exposed to certain things that can be a waste of time at best and extremely dangerous and detrimental at worst. I mean, this guy, Mr. Beast, he's far from the worst thing on the internet that children are being exposed to. So at the Islamic school in Jacksonville, one of my third graders, he was so wild and so full of energy and bouncing off the walls and it turns out this student would somehow browse the internet largely unsupervised. Apparently his, his parents, they barely knew any English so it was hard for teachers to communicate with them and I think perhaps they as well as many of us are, were naive. We don't really know what evils are out there on the internet. Some of the things wouldn't even cross our minds, they're so crazy. So this student would be exposed to things that are not for kids his age, and he was obsessed particularly with violent video games. There was even a game 
that the, the kids were talking about one day, they said in order to win a mission, they had to desecrate a mushaf, a, a Quran. A'udhu billah. So when I heard them talking about this, I stopped the whole class I, and I started to investigate. I said, what's this game called? Where did you hear about it? And I was asking them specifically. And I found out that this one student in third grade, that's how I found out that he seemed to have no supervision regarding what he's doing on the internet. You know, he's watching all kinds of stuff. And then one of the other students, he said that he was exposed to this game when he was at the barber shop. I guess they had video games at the barber shop that he went to and they were playing it there. So then these kids who sneakily find out about these things, then they come to school and they talk about it to their classmates and this is how things spread. And imagine, this is at an Islamic school. So just think about the public schools with non-Muslims. We shouldn't write off the Islamic school because of this. I mean, they're still way better than a uh, public school where some of these families, may Allah guide them, they have no limits at all. They have no foundation of morality. They don't believe in Allah. The most important thing to some of them is just freedom and just fulfilling their desires. So their kids are exposing themselves to everything without restriction. And they don't even have any shame about it. At least at the Islamic school, we teach them right from wrong. Objective truth, according to the Quran and Sunnah. They have to be sneaky about bad behavior. In public school, you might find teachers spreading filth to the students. You might find it in the official curriculum. Anyways, this is the reality that we are currently living. So I really just want to bring it to everyone's attention, inshallah. And to continue the story, the reason Abdullah's mother reached out to me was because over the summer, this YouTuber, Mr. Beast, he had a, a competition called Finger on the App. The rules were that whoever wanted to participate would download an app at a certain time and everyone would put their finger down on the screen. And the last person to take their finger off the phone screen would win $25,000. So Abdullah, along with potentially millions of other children, of course, I'm sure so many Muslims also participated, and when the competition started, Abdullah joined and he stayed up the entire night with his finger on the app. An entire seven and a half hours passed and Abdullah was still in the game. Abdullah said that eight million people originally entered the contest. Allahu alam if that's an accurate number, but he said eight million people were originally entered in the contest and then fast forward seven and a half hours later, the contestants dwindled down to only 2014. And Abdullah was from amongst them. From 8 million, presumably, to 2014, Abdullah was still in it. But what do you think happened? Why would a Muslim specifically have a difficult time spending so many consecutive hours participating in this type of competition? It was the summertime, so he didn't have school. He was probably tired, but he could, he could have tried to sleep with his finger on the app. However, one thing he could not escape was salah was the prayer. Eventually, the time came for Salah, and that's exactly what happened to Abdullah. It was time for Fajr. So try to imagine the difficulty he was facing as a 12-year-old who's deeply into the video game culture. He spent seven and a half hours playing this game. He watched hour after hour as the other contestants dropped out. What could he do? He had to make a decision. So Alhamdulillah, after 7 hours, 37 minutes and 8 seconds, Abdullah took his finger off the app and walked away from the possibility of winning $25,000 $25, so he could make wudu and pray fajr. Alhamdulillah. Now the reason his mother reached out to me was because she felt like she was in a tough position as a mother. She wanted some advice regarding what to say to her son. I mean, she was obviously proud of him for making the right decision to pray fajr, but she wasn't sure how to express that to her 12-year-old son, you know, in a way that he would understand and be happy about his decision and not have any regrets, not have any animosity toward the fact he had to pray. So think about what would you say to Abdullah? How would you comfort him in this situation? Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So, there were two main things that I felt should be expressed to Abdullah because his story involved two primary components. Number one, praying fajr. And number two, leaving something for the sake of Allah. That's what happened. Abdullah realized he had to pray fajr, so he left the game for the sake of Allah. 
It was reported in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, said, Rak'ata al-fajr khairun min dunya wa ma fiha. The Prophet والسلام, said, the two units of sunnah prayer before fajr are better than this world and all it contains. Let us think about that. Let us remember the Prophet وسلم, was given revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not speak about these things from his own conjecture. It's not like it's just his opinion. He relayed the truth that Allah sent to him. The two sunnah that are optional are better than this world and all it contains. So what about the obligatory prayers? The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are praying on time. We don't get closer to Allah through anything more than what He made obligatory upon us first and foremost. So if Abdullah can spend seven and a half hours with his finger on an app trying to win $25,000, then we should ask ourselves if we are willing to spend an extra few minutes in the morning not only praying Fajr, of course, but also praying to Sunnah worth far more than $25,000. The other point to emphasize is the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, Verily, you will never leave anything for the sake of Allah Almighty except that Allah will replace it with something better. This is such an important fact that really goes back to Tawheed. We really, these are simple teachings that we just need to internalize. This is our purpose to implement Tawheed Worshipping Allah alone, understanding He is in control of everything. Allah is the one who grants happiness, contentment, health, wealth, blessings. No matter how much money you have, no matter what materialistic thing or event that happens or relationship you have or anything that one thinks will benefit them, the reality is it all goes back to Allah. Nothing has the power to harm or help anything except by Allah's will. So we always have to keep Allah first. We might love something that's bad for us and we might hate something that's good for us. Allah knows and we don't know. Since our father Adam, alayhi salam, Iblis, always tries to make us rely on other than Allah for happiness, for contentment, for fulfillment. He made the tree seem enticing instead of tawheed. He made idol worship enticing. He makes our desires enticing anything he can be dazzled to take us away from the oneness of Allah. That's what he tries to do. And this life is a test. So let us always remember Allah is in control of everything. And whatever we leave for his sake will be replaced by him with something better. May Allah protect us and our children. May Allah guide us and our children and the society around us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab anar. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa qimu salam.